Hello, this is Kath King joining you for Q&A Tuesday. Um, today I don't so much have a question as just a comment that I would like to make based on an observation. And what I've been observing with some people from the program and some of my private clients is that there's a particular personality trait that makes it very difficult for some people to succeed in their weight loss and their attempts to get healthier. And that tends to be people who are highly agreeable, people who are people pleasers. And this is, you know, the, this the agreeableness is one of those personality traits that exists on a continuum. So there's a few people in the world who are very disagreeable, and that is just a natural trait. And then it goes all the way through a kind of bell curve, and we end up at the other end of the spectrum with people who are highly agreeable and don't like to let anybody down. And these are those really sweet people that you know who will do anything for anybody, um, who are the ones that are always asked to organize things at work or um, at the, your children's school and they really have a hard job letting people down, they really have a hard job saying no to anything. And if you are a people pleaser, a really highly agreeable, one of these lovely sweet people, it can really affect your success. It can have some really negative effects because these people often have trouble turning down food when it's offered to them. So in social events, they have trouble saying no when somebody offers them a piece of birthday cake. Um, and especially when you're dealing with um, family and you've got you know, your mum or your grandma or someone who says, but I made it just for you. And... So some people who are highly of that highly agreeable nature really don't have that voice that's strong to say, no, I don't eat that. And there's an awful lot of social pressure that these people struggle with that can really de 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 derail them. And so the first thing that I want to say to people, if this is you, is that there's nothing wrong with you. This is just naturally how you are. And when designed, all of us, in, in, in fact, are designed to be like that to a certain extent. Some of us just more than, than others. So if we look at, at a human being's natural history, we've always lived in tribes. And we needed the tribe for survival. And evolutionary, um, in, in our evolution, if you did something out of the norm from your tribe, you were risking being kicked out of the tribe, which meant certain death. And so we have this huge drive to be agreeable, to um, fit in and be a good tribe member. But in modern society, membership in our various tribes that we, we belong to, so our family, our work, our church, our friends, can, this can sometimes entail eating in a way that's unhealthy. That's, and because that's the norm these days. Unhealthy food is what's a social norm. So a lot of people, um, for, for a lot of people, it feels really uncomfortable to stand out and be different and to refuse the food that everyone else in the tribe is eating. And on the other side of that, that coin, um, this kind of behavior can also be threatening to other people in the tribe. So some people will can see it as you trying to do something that's that's hard and worthwhile, maybe something that they don't think that they could do. They can see that it takes diligence and that you're being conscientious. And they probably enjoy having you as an eating buddy. And 
If you succeed on this weight loss journey and recover from your food addiction, not only do they lose you as their eating buddy, but it, that behavior, that conscientiousness and the gain in health and good looks and being nice and slim actually raises your status in the tribe. And so often people will try to knock you back down to their level. So that's one thing. That's one part of understanding this, this problem. But there's another part to understanding it. Something else is definitely going on as well. And um, it can be difficult for some people to hear. Um, but basically, if you are, for instance, if you are an ethical vegan, and if someone offers an ethical vegan some meat, an ethical vegan won't eat it just to please someone else. They just don't cross that line. Um, another example is that if someone is truly allergic to something like if they have an anaphylactic reaction to peanuts, and then if their auntie Dot comes up to them and says, oh, but I made this peanut praline and I made it just for you, that allergic person won't eat it just to avoid a conflict with auntie Dot. So the reality is, and like I say, uh, people often don't want to admit this, but that if you eat unhealthy food, you're doing it because part of you wants to eat it. When someone offers you food that's kind of your drug of choice, something that's got maybe sugar or oil or flour or dairy, there's a part of you that wants to say yes. You know, you've kind of got this angel and devil, a devil on, on each shoulder, and they're fighting with each other. And so often I think people are using the social pressure as an excuse to do what it is that they actually want to do all along. So hopefully that can kind of help us to understand why this is happening and why it's hard. But there are some things that we can do to make it easier to say no. So even if you're a highly agreeable person, um, and specifically there are ways of saying no to food that won't make other people feel bad, and so that, that aren't threatening to them. And so hopefully all these beautiful, agreeable people pleasers out there will find food easier to turn down if they feel like they're not going to be threatening other people or if they're not going to be making other people feel bad. So we really need to have some, some um, effective phrases and strategies rehearsed and kind of tucked away ready to be pulled out in social situations where these food pushers, I'm going to call them instead of drug pushers, these food pushers are going to try to derail them. And so that really is the key, to have these phrases and strategies prepared in advance and rehearsed so that you don't have to think of what to do or say on the spot. And so I've put together a few that I and my clients have found very useful, but you can probably think of more yourself that will be more in tune with your own personality and way of saying things. You just need to kind of take the time to do it when you aren't in the midst of a situation. So here goes my recommendations, my ideas. You could say, gosh, I'm so full, I could not eat another bite. Another one is you could say, thank you so much, but I'm allergic to a certain ingredient that's in the food. And you can say that whether, you know, even if you're totally not allergic to anything, in this situation, you have my permission to tell a little white lie to save yourself. And, you know, in many ways, it's not a lie because when you eat this food, you break out in fat. Another idea is you could say, my doctor says that I cannot eat anything with and then whatever it is in it, but that looks so delicious. Or you could say, 
I'm really full right now, but I'll have some in a bit. And so no one's going to follow you around for the whole event and, you know, check up on whether you have actually had some. Or you could go the opposite way and you could say, oh, yes, thanks. I've already had some. It was really d delicious, but I can't fit in any more. So those are just a few suggestions. And like I say, um, reword them to make them sound natural to you. Um, come up with your own ideas. And just one final thought on how to manage these social situations and the kind of pressure that you feel to have to eat food that you really don't want to eat. And that is that you can always avoid the situation. So at the beginning of your your health and weight loss journey, maybe you don't have to accept all of these invitations until you're really solid with your habits and your practices. And when you just wait until these foods aren't calling quite as loudly. So I'm not suggesting that that's forever, that you can never go anywhere again and, and, and be social. But just for a while, you might need to stick to safe food environments. Because when we're talking about food addictions, cue avoidance is really important. And then I think the only thing I'd, I'd, the other thing I'd like to say, I'd like to just finish on, um, is by reminding you that those who aren't serious about health and weight loss will do what's easy and what's convenient. But those who succeed will do what it takes. And so my question for you really is, how serious are you? So that's all for today, and I hope you found it useful, and I look forward to talking with you next time. Bye-bye.